Weavers, welcome back. I'm Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. Today I'm going to be tying a new warp onto an existing warp that's uh, that I just finished the weaving project on. And I want to do a second set of that same pattern, but in a different colored warp. So the first one was uh, a white background warp. And so this time I'm going to be using a dark blue warp. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the warp on, measure the warp out on the warping board, and then we will uh, show tying it on to the existing warp. Okay, so now we've got the warp measured on the loom, the first spout, and I will go ahead and uh, chain it off and take it over to the loom. As you can see, I've got a couple bouts already on. Um, this is number three of four. And since I'm tying, since I'm tying on to an existing um, warp. I already have my leaf sticks set up and positioned to be able to tie on here. So here's the third one and we'll go ahead and do the last one. Okay, so we've got the loom set up with the new warp on it and I need to tie the new warp onto the old warp. So I wanted to demonstrate the weaver's knot. So we could just do an overhand knot and that would probably suffice, but I have had knots come undone when I get to the end of my warp and there's a lot of tension on it. The weaver's knot is a very strong knot. You can cut the ends very short and the knot will not come undone. So here we have an example. This will be representing our old warp. This is going to represent our new warp. And I'm actually going to switch these because I'm right-handed. Okay, so we're going to take our new warp. We're going to create a loop and we're going to put the long end of the loop over the short end of the loop. Okay, now we're going to take the old warp we're going to create a loop. Doesn't need to be crossed. Doesn't matter which 
if the short tail is on the top or bottom. You're going to put the old warp loop up through the new warp loop and just pinch it there at the end. Now you're going to take your short tail, you're going to put it up through the old warp loop, grab onto it, pinch it with the long portion of the tail. Now slip your fingers down so you're pinching just the two tails, the long tail and the short tail of the old warp, and you'll pull in opposite directions. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so let's do that again. Old warp, new warp. Loop it so the short tail is under the long tail. Loop the old warp. Put it through the loop, push the tail up through, pull in opposite directions. Now, we can take that, where's my, and we can cut this very short. I am, okay, the thread broke before the knot did. That's how strong the knot is. So, this is the knot to okay. use. Now that we know how to tie a weaver's knot, we're going to tie on to our existing work. So you can see here that I've already gotten a start on it and it looks very messy, looks like it's going to be an absolute tangled nightmare, but it won't. I've got my cross, I've got my bouts chained and under tension, so once I get these all tied on and um, start winding them on to the back beam, it will all even out and be perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and uh, start tying on the next bout, which I've got over here. So the way I do this is I have the chain and then I use one of my Ikea chip clips and put it through that last loop. That way it won't, it won't unravel. You can't pull that through. So the only thing that you do need to be concerned about is at the other end that we're going to be tying this is the loop that went around that last peg once we cut that to start tying on you need to make sure that you don't pull it out of the cross now this was wound two at a time we have a a dark and a light uh, in each cross section so you can pull that apart and see it and so we're going to tie the dark thread onto the white thread on the existing warp and the light thread will go with the gray thread on the existing warp so the other thing I wanted to point out is I have tied the, 
um, the back, or I guess, what is this called? And it's not the apron rod. The apron rod is up in the front. Um, I guess the warp rod. So I have tied the warp rod um, to the front of the loom so that it can't pull back and pull my warp out. And then I've used the Ikea chip clips to keep my breast or my beater bar pulled forward just past um, top dead center so that it won't flop forward and but it still allows me some room here to see which thread I'm working with in which heddle um, so that I get them in the correct order. So um, let's go ahead and get that started. First thing I do is on the old warp, since this was uh, wrapped around the last warping peg um, and then that loop that the last warping peg went around um, was just uh, slid through the warp beam or the warp rod. Um, there's just a loop on the back. It's not tied onto the back. Um, so if I take these two bouts, I can pull them back and forth. So I don't want to grab one of them and just pull because it could pull this, the one that it's attached to um, out of the reed and the heddles. So I always do this in pairs. So for this warp, there are two um, warp threads through each heddle. So I'm going to work with four at a time. So I'm going to, I know that the white thread is always first through the heddles. The gray thread is the second one. And I want to make sure that they're not twisted behind the reed. Then I take the second set of pair, or the second pair, and I just kind of move them up and down and I can see beat back behind the reed that they're not twisted. Um, and so then I just kind of separate them so that I can pick them up easily. Now, on the new warp, let's see if I can find there they are. Okay, so these are the last two in this warp bout. So again, I'm going to work with two pairs. These were also warped uh, or measured out on the warping board two at a time. So I've got two pairs. The dark thread is going to be first and then the lighter thread. And then the next pair Is the same the dark thread and then the light thread so I'm going to pick up my first thread uh, of the new warp and I'm going to create my loop okay so the long part is over the short part we make a loop I'm going to grab my old warp thread I'm going to create the loop I'm going to push it through pinch it here Push that tail through, grab it, and pull. There we go. And I'm going to set that one aside. It seems like it takes a lot of time, but once you get a rhythm, it goes pretty fast. Where did that white one go? Ah, okay, so here we go. Because I'm videoing, 
I wasn't paying close enough attention. And I tied the white one to the light colored thread. So I may need to, I'm going to have to pick that apart. Fortunately, I have some good nails for it. But if all else fails, I will go get my tweezers. Looks like it's coming. There we go. Okay. All right, so I should have grabbed this gray thread. The gray and the white are really close together in color, so sometimes it's challenging to see which one you're picking up. Plus, trying to talk and do this at the same time is distracting. All right, but there's my white. So that's one bout down. Pull our next one in. And if I can find my scissors. Okay, so you can see this is nice and neat. Um, be sure that you get a uh, and even so you're getting the very middle of that loop. Okay. So now, as you can see, it would be easy to drop this cross. So it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I really would rather not. Um, so we're going to pull the first two. Out. And I found, find it helps if I put, put it down between my knees to be able to create some tension to pull on. Alright, there it goes. Okay. So sometimes when you are pulling these through, because we did this two at a time, you'll notice that it looks like I'm, and I don't know if you can see this, it looks like we're getting a light blue first and then a dark blue. And I want the dark blue first. Um, this one happens to be twisted over and I can just do that. but. Sometimes it's twisted way down there, and if I was to get it twisted, um, it's not going to cause a problem. Um, that's such a minor twist that uh, I don't really even worry about it. Okay, and then I'm going to... my pair up here which there we go all right so um, pull that back forward so that I can see my heddles okay perfect and then I just kind of set these aside so that it's a little easier to just grab the correct one although Obviously, I don't do it all the time. 
some people um, feel that it's not worth the effort to tie a new warp onto the old warp. Honestly, it's depending on the uh, compl complexity of the threading draft. Um, it may not be, but it does save some warp. So if you are working with uh, warp that is maybe an expensive, maybe a silk or something, and um, tying on makes complete sense because all this warp is your waste and you're not going to have all that waste if it's an expensive um, warp. So, I have all the um, warp, new warp threads tied onto the old warp threads, and now I am going to um, wind the warp uh, back so that I can straighten these all out and kind of get them um, situated. So go ahead and do that. This all looks really scary right here because it looks like a tangled mess, but this is the fun part. You'll see. All right. So I'm not going to wind all the way on. I'm just going to uh, get it to the point where I can get some uh, tension. So right about there. So because these are not knotted exactly the same length, um, there are some, some uh, slack. So we'll have to be sure to take that up as we wind on and make sure that we don't get any snagged uh, threads at the cross here and snap a warp thread. So just have to be a little more careful as we're winding on. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and I'm going to trim uh, these 
ends so that um, when I get it, when I'm back to the end of the weaving, they don't uh, hang up against each other um, when I'm changing sheds. So we'll go ahead and do that and then um, we'll start winding on. Okay, so I got those all trimmed up and now we're just going to um, crank it through the reed carefully. That was pretty easy. And I'm going to pull the beater forward so I can watch them going through the petals. I'm just going to go very slow and you can see they're catching. So we're just going to ease them through. Now it is just a matter of uh, winding on and um, getting some even tension. So I'm going to uh, go get my weights and do that and uh, we'll get this on the loom. to tie on to the apron rod and start weaving. Now tying on to the uh, existing warp in this instance probably didn't save me any more time than re-threading the pattern. However, it did save me uh, potential errors in my threading. So that was well worth the effort. So thanks for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing so that you are notified when I release new videos. Thanks and happy weaving.